My heart's pumping. Tank, 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 tank. Oh, 145, 145. Stop, 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 stop. 150. He doesn't see us yet. Try and hit him in the turret. Yep. Oh, he hit him. Nice shot! He's smoking. Yep, get him. Gonna hit him again. He's trying to target. Oh, yeah, target that! Nice job. First tank. Fuck yes. Nice job, guys. Good call outs. What's up, guys? Today we're going to be doing a tank guide so you can learn the ins and outs of the armor class. Goodbye, poor bugger. First off, how to join or create a tank squad. To join an armor unit, go to the armor section on the deployment page. Find the unit you want to join and click the join unit arrow. This will automatically make you crewman if there's already a commander. To create a unit, go to the bottom left of the deployment page, click create unit, choose armor, and create. This will automatically make you the commander of the tank unit. Note that there can only be three armor units and only six people per unit. Once you've created a unit or joined a unit, find a tank on the map that's either empty or has an open position and try to spawn closest to it. There can only be three people in each tank. The commander has a little bit more utility than the crewman as he spawns with a submachine gun, a pistol, a bandage, and binoculars. The commander can use the binoculars to mark different locations to point out to his squad mates. By looking down the binoculars and using your middle mouse wheel, you can scroll through the different markers. To place one, press your left mouse button and click down. It can be a good idea to have your commander in the periscope so he can mark different locations for the driver and for the gunner. The commander can also mark locations on the map by holding down numbers 1 through 6 and clicking on the desired location on the map to mark the position. The crewman has a lot less to work with compared to the commander when being outside of the tank. He's only equipped with a pistol and a bandage. To get inside of the tank, press and hold down the F key. If there is nobody in the tank, it will automatically put you into the driver's position. By holding down the F keys, you can switch into different seats. F1 puts you in the driver's position, F2 is the gunner, and F3 is the periscope. Now let's talk about the driver. The driver can start the engine of the tank by holding down the E key. After starting the engine, you will notice you can't move unless you shift. In Hell Out Loose, you will need to manually shift the gears. To shift up, use your left shift key. To shift down, use your left control key. You have a reverse gear, a park gear, then first, second, third, and fourth. Make sure you shift the gears in order, from one to four. If you start in fourth gear, it'll take you forever to get up to top speed. Lower gears are going to be better for turning and maneuvering. When you come up to a corner, make sure you downshift before you get to the corner, otherwise you won't be able to turn. The higher gears are going to be good for chasing down a fleeing enemy or covering a large amount of ground. The driver also has a machine gun at his disposal. By holding down the left mouse button, you are able to fire the machine gun. By moving the mouse around, you are able to change the direction of fire. Now let's take a look at the driver's controls. By hitting Escape, Options, Key Bindings, and clicking the Driver tab in the top right, we can look at the key binds for the driver. To go in reverse, use left control 
and shift down past park into reverse. It's worth mentioning that instead of hitting S to go backwards like normal, you will actually hold W down when in reverse gear to go backwards. It's extremely important that all three rules communicate properly. You don't want your gunner trying to take a shot when the driver is moving. You'll see in this clip that's exactly what happens. The gunner's main role is to control the main cannon as well as the machine gun. The main cannon can be controlled by using WASD to move around the cannon. Mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out, left mouse button to fire, and R to reload. You can also change between high explosive and armor piercing rounds. Also the machine gun can be fired by holding down the right mouse button. Here we'll take a look at the controls for the gunner. Now let's take a look at the periscope. Although you can operate a tank with just a driver and a gunner, having a crew member at the periscope can make a huge difference. With the new update, you can now move the periscope moving your mouse left or right, up or down, compared to previously when you had to use WASD to move it and it was extremely slow. The periscope can also zoom in and out using the middle mouse wheel, although the view of the inside of the tank, you cannot look around. The periscope is primarily in charge of navigation for the driver and spotting for the gunner. If you're going to be calling out enemies for the gunner to kill, make sure you're using good directions. Left, right, ahead, backwards, those are not good directions. Use your compass at the bottom of the screen to give good coordinates. As navigator, you should bring up the map and find the best path for the tank to take. As always, the communication between the other two roles in the tank are extremely important, so make sure you're using your voice comms. So you just joined a game, and there are no fresh tank spawns back at HQ. Sometimes when you look at the map you can highlight the tanks and see if all the positions are filled. If there is an open position in one of the tanks you can spawn in the closest area and try to get to the tank. Now let's take a quick look at damage of the tanks. At the bottom you're going to see three icons. One is your turret, two is your tracks, and the third one is the body of the tank. When the turret is red and damaged, the gunner will not be able to shoot his machine gun, but the driver will be able to. If your tracks are damaged, you will be limited to reverse, park, and first gear. If your tank is damaged, try calling over voice comms to get an engineer to come over to repair you. Oh, oh, he's still, he's still good. Oh. No! <laughs> got the reload before me. A couple more things I want to talk about is if you're shooting at an enemy tank straight on, you will do damage. But if you shoot at a large angle, there's a chance that your bullet will ricochet. Also, different parts of the tank are stronger than others. The front being the strongest and the back being the weakest. When fighting another tank, it will take around three shots to kill the other tank depending on where you hit. It only takes two shots from an AA tank rocket launcher to kill you. Anti-tank mines and air raids can destroy you immediately. If you see an enemy crawling up to the tank, most likely he's trying to lay an anti-tank mine under your tracks so you will blow up. That's why it's always a good idea when being in a tank to stay around other infantry units and other tanks. They will protect you and increase your chances of staying alive. That's going to do it for this guide on tanks. If you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button, and we'll see you guys next time. I got it. Nice job.